Hi there, this video is going to show you how to find the greatest common factor of two numbers. So let's take a look at the factors of 12 and 20. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 because those are all the numbers that will divide evenly into 12. Same with the numbers for 20. I have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Now, if I want to find all the factors that they have in common, I would start looking for common factors. One is a factor for both of those numbers, two is a factor for both of those numbers, and four is a factor for both of those numbers. Those are all what we call common factors. Now, we are interested in the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is sometimes called the GCF. And in this case, the greatest common factor just means which of those common factors is the greatest. The largest of the common factors is the number 4, so we say the GCF is 4. Here's another example. Find the greatest common factor of 40 and 50. Now again, I can look at these factors as all being common, but the greatest one is 10. So we would say the greatest common factor, that means the largest factor they have in common, is 10. Now sometimes you can just look at the two numbers and just ask the question, what is the largest number that will go into 40 and 50? And you might be able to come up with 10 by just thinking through your multiplication facts. And that's fine. If you're asked to find the greatest common factor of two numbers, and when you consider the factors of the numbers, 8 and 15, in this example, the only common factor is 1. If the only common factor between two numbers is 1, then we call those two numbers relatively prime. Because related to each other, they're prime. There are no common factors other than one. Sometimes the numbers are not so obvious. If I look at the numbers 30 and 84 and I say, what are the, what's the largest number that will go into both of them? I might not know that off the top of my head. And sometimes, either in an assignment or in a test, you'll be asked to show the prime factorization method. So here's what that looks like. If I take 30 and I break it down to 3 times 10, the 3 is done, and then 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. There's the prime factorization of 30. If I do the same thing for 84, 84 is not a common number, but it's even, so one easy pick would be 2 times 42. The 2 is done. 42 could be broken down into 6 times 7. The 6 becomes 2 times 3, and the 7 comes down. So I have both of those numbers, and now to find the greatest common factor, I need to see what factors they have in common. So the first thing I would do is I notice that they both have a 3. So I'm going to write 3 down here. Then I notice that they both have a 2. So I'm going to write a 2 down here. And if I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6, which means 6 is the greatest common factor. Now realize that this is a 1 to 1. I've got a 3 that shows up, so I circle them once. And even though there's another 2 over here, this 2 doesn't have a corresponding 2 over in this set, so I don't write it down. They have to be paired up, one from each prime factorization. Here's another example. I already have the prime factorization trees done, and now I'm going to write down what the greatest common factor is. Well, the first thing I'm going to notice is that there's a 2 here and a 2 here, so I'm going to write down a 2. Then I notice I've got a 3 here and a 3 here, so I'm going to write down a 3. And then I notice that I have another 3 that can be paired up with this 3, so I will write down a third 3, and then I'm going to multiply those two numbers together. 2 times 3 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18. Now let's see what happens when we put variables into our problems. 
Well, when I look at the number 10, I know that that can be broken up into 2 times 5. And x to the 4th can be written like this. x times x times x times x. And y to the 2nd can be written as y times y. Over here, 15 is 3 times 5. And then I've got x to the 3rd. So that's going to turn into x times x times x. And I'm going to have to put these all over here. 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got the prime factorization of both of those terms. Now I do the same thing that I was doing before. For my greatest common factor, I notice that I've got a 5 that shows up in both. So I write down the 5. Then I notice that I've got an x showing up three times, and that's common to both. So I would put x times x times x. And then it looks like I've got y showing up twice, common to both. So I would put y and y. So my greatest common factor is 5, x to the third, y to the second. So again, you're looking to see what they have in common. They've each got at least three x's and two y's, so I write those down here in my GCF.